Hello, welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. My name is Terry Ellis. I'm an audio reviewer and a Dirac Live calibrator. And thank you for joining me for the review for the Sonoma M1 headphone system, which is a £5,000 headphone system. Yes, you heard me correctly. The Sonoma M1 costs £5,000, but it is a full system. You get your headphones, you get an amplifier or an energizer, which has a built-in DAC. So besides the source, the Sonoma M1 is a high-end plug-and-play system. Now I need to hold my hands up. I've had the Sonoma M1 for a number of months and I want to thank Nintronics, the excellent Hi-Fi and AV dealership for loaning me this sample for a review. And the reason I've had it for so long is when I got it, I installed it into the system that you can see, which is my video creation and work office computer and it just fitted in so lovely and it's been such a joy to use is that I couldn't bear to take it out and I've got to take the M1 back tomorrow so I'm making this review literally at lastminute.com. So what can make a headphone system be worth £5,000? I can hear some of you shouting that at the screen. Well there's a hell of a lot of technology and other bits going on here and I just want to dive into them just a little bit. For starters the M1 is an electrostatic based headphone system but one with a difference. It doesn't use your standard electrostatic technology. Behind the M1 is a company called Warwick Acoustics and Warwick Acoustics are a UK based technology company that has designed and developed a new type of transducer. Now this transducer technology is being used within the automotive industry and within the Sonoma headphone range. This is called a HPEL transducer. The electrostatic panel was developed around 60 years ago and a very basic explanation of the technology there is a membrane and two metal grids. The membrane is energized and the sound radiates out through these grids. The HPEL technology is very different. It uses a 15 micron thick or maybe thin it depends on which way you look at it, basically a hair's thickness, flexible laminated front grid. This is fixed to an open cell insulation spacer, which is precisely tensioned to create what Sonoma calls cells, which have what they also call drum skins. Now using FEA analysis, Sonoma are able to use this technology to balance out and average out any unwanted transducer resonances. On top of that, it's the front grid that creates the sound. There's no grid in between the sound source and your ear. So this is really exciting technology and quite clearly a step forward. And this is the reason why with the M1 headphones, Sonoma have tried to keep the space between the driver and your ear as uncumbered as possible. So this is exciting technology, right? But that is only really the start of it. The ear cups that you can see, they are made from magnesium, which is injection molded. Now magnesium is used because it's lighter, it's better acoustically, and it's stronger than materials like aluminium. And it also has better RFI and EMI rejection properties. The nylon headband and the sheepskin ear pads are not as exciting to me, so we'll gloss over those. The Energizer with its built-in DAC, now we're talking. The amplifier or the Energizer is a single-ended Class A design that uses FETs for their tube-like sound quality but fantastic reliability. The built-in DAC uses two reference level ESS Sabre stereo 32-bit DAC chips that are configured to work in a mono operation to get a lower signal to noise ratio. More exciting I think is the Sonoma M1 has a 64-bit DSP solution built in which means Sonoma can control the exacting frequency response that they want the listener to hear and then there's quite an interesting part on the website where they describe different types of frequency responses or different types of sonic presentations they could have built into the Sonoma M1 but they decided to go with or have them sound like a flat pair of speakers would sound in a good listening room. Looking closer at the M1 Energizer, especially on the rear, we can see we've got several different digital inputs and an analog input, which means 
We could use a turntable with the M1 on maybe. We could use the M1 with a higher performing DAC if we choose to. Physically, the M1 Energizer is pretty massive. It's heavy, it's substantial, it's well built, and I really like it for that fact. The switches on the M1, have a listen. They are very clunky, but good quality clunky. Is that design in keeping with what is essentially very new and modern and forward thinking technology? I'm not sure, but I personally really like them. Something reassuring about that quality clunkiness in terms of what's going on with the operation. The Sonoma M1 comes with a universal switching type of power supply and a pretty good quality USB cable. The packaging for the M1, now this is really something. The box that the Energizer comes in is absolutely massive and there's a ridiculous amount of internal protective foam packaging. Now maybe Sonoma were envisioning selling these headphone systems to people and delivering them via either airplane, helicopter, or maybe even drones because there's so much protective packaging in there, these could easily survive a fall from height. The headphones, now these do feel different to other headphones. When you pick them up in your hand, can you tell they're made of magnesium? Not really, but they definitely feel different. They actually feel very acoustically damped and inert, really, even though they're extremely lightweight. Now that lightweight is hindered a little bit by the custom cable that comes with it. It's not the cable itself because that is really light. I think it's actually the connectors that connect the cable to the headphones and that section at the top there, it just has a little bit of resistance. You're always conscious and aware that you're connected to a cable, but it's nothing like something like the Focal Utopia and the cable that comes with those. I think a thing that's very important to point out is that the headphones have a lot of tension. Now I have a particularly big head. And for me, the M1 felt just about big enough. And you, when you put them on, you are very aware of just how much tension there is on your head. However, because they're light, and pretty soon you do almost forget that you're wearing them. And they are very comfortable and very easy to wear for long listening sessions or maybe long work sessions. I can appreciate them for their build quality, but do they blow my socks off? Do they feel really luxury and premium? I think other headphones are better in this regard. Other headphones definitely feel more premium and luxury in your hands and when they're on your head. The Sonoma M1 feels more like a very high quality tool than it does a luxury item. And when it comes to them being a tool, I think they are a phenomenal work tool. In fact, they've been so useful to me for making my video quality, especially the audio quality, much higher since I've been using them. And they've been vital and valuable to me for assessing the recordings that I do, especially for the AB demonstrations. Now, if you listen to the AB demos that I do on these headphones, you'd realize the differences between them are quite often massive. And that is because these are a really resolving sets of headphones that are extremely clear sounding. Unfortunately, that does come at a bit of a price. For the majority of the review period, I've been using the Sonoma M1 in the system that you're looking at, as I mentioned, my work video creation system. Now, this is a powerhouse system. It's not an optimized for audio PC system, and I can hear that. I can very clearly hear that, and I can really hear how bad software players like media player sound. They sound bloody awful. The moral of that story is, if you wanna hear the best of what the M1 is capable of, then pay attention to your source quality. As I mentioned, the sound from the M1 is very clean, and as a result, there is an excellent sound stage. I would say it's a very neutral presentation, as per advertised, and there is a lot of detail, but delivered in a smooth and really quite fluid way. Is it tube-like? Maybe a little. I don't think there's enough of a tube sound to totally please a devout tube amplifier headphone audio file, but there's enough of it to come through and be very enjoyable. Bass from the Sonoma M1 is really excellent for an open back headphone. It's very fast, it's very clear, and at times quite powerful. For me, it's maybe a little leaner than I would personally like, but still very pleasing and good quality. Overall, the Sonoma M1 is very much a reference level headphone system, and I don't think I've heard anything like the best 
of what it can deliver. Yet, it still made a huge impression on me and really raised my bar of expectation of what I would want from a headphone system. And it's made it very difficult to listen to lesser quality headphone systems for any long periods of time. It's not all perfect. As it stands, there is no computer-based user interface. We can download drivers for Windows and they work perfectly. And there's also been a firmware update that installs and works perfectly. But it's a real shame that we don't have some user sound customization so that we can tailor the sound more to our individual preferences and really get some use out of that 64-bit DSP engine. Even if we just had maybe one, two or three different sound preferences to choose from, I think that would help to tailor the sound to different individuals' personal preferences. And I think this would be a real standout feature when people are comparing or considering spending this sort of money compared to spending it on maybe a very expensive pair of headphones and then a really high quality separate system because there'll always be an inherent benefit to buying a complete system like this. The manufacturer is able to specify and put all the parts together so that they all fully function perfectly together, a little bit akin to something like an active speaker system. Now, if you think most active speaker systems have some form of customization or sound tailoring built in, I think that is a massive thing that's missing from this M1 system. I also think some people will see the price as a major negative, but when you break it down, we're only really looking at about £1,500 for the headphones, £1,500 for the Energizer, and maybe £1,500 for the DAC. Some of that might seem expensive, but it's not really when you think about it. And £1,500 for a set of headphones that are pushing technology is really pretty common ground for the headphone markets these days, with some headphones costing significantly more than that. So when you break it all down and put it all back together, £5,000 isn't a crazy price tag for a reference level headphone complete system. So my final thoughts for the Sonoma M1. Initially that £5,000 price tag might seem steep and high, but as I've mentioned and explained, we've got some really forward thinking technology here and a lot of really high quality stuff going on. Possibly one of the things working against the M1 in terms of the perception of that price tag will be the fact that it is quite a minimalist design, focusing on more on performance than are coming across as a luxury item. And I'm thinking compared to something like the Focal Utopias and maybe the Meze Imperiums. I think if you had the three of those in your hands, the Sonoma M1 would stick out like a sore thumb for the wrong reasons. However, put all of them on your head and listen to them and things would be very different. You might buy them for their technology alone. You probably wouldn't buy them for their design and potential luxury appeal, but I think you would buy them for their sound quality. And is that the most important thing? It pretty much is, isn't it? So thanks for joining me for the review for the Sonoma M1 headphone system. I'll be seeing you soon. Thanks for watching. Take care.